Why, hello everyone. This is Duskull, Maka Aesthetic Gamer, and this is The Last Door Chapter 2. It has released out. The first episode is also now uh, open to the public. We're going to press the new game and get started almost immediately. Oh, yeah, I first need to allow local storage. Allow! Father in Heaven, hallowed be your name. Already epic, but I need to make sure the audio is all good. We are now playing as a church guy. I just need to remember how everything works inside this game. I mean, there's Jesus. We have ourselves a nice chapel bed to relax by. We make lots of croaking and groaning the moment we walk around. Uh, nothing to touch besides this table. Or is there something by there? Let's try this first. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Well, that was very precise. How about the coat hanger? Give us each day our daily bread. Well, there goes my jacket. Um, sign over here. All right. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive our debt or debtors. Now we're praying. I guess we click ourselves. Oh. And lead us not into temptation. So we are belting ourselves. I guess for forgiveness? I mean, I'm not gonna judge if God's into the sadist masochist shit, but... But deliver us from evil. Alright. Amen. I need to change this window a little bit more. There we go. Now tell me, where are you? What do you see? That's a question I think most people want to know at some time in their life. We are alone. You know, I, I never wanted, wanted to judge how a candle works, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't make everything appear black. Unless, of course, I never tried putting a candle in the fog. Oh well, it's a nice stylistic effect. Kind of funny because I'm expecting crows. The crows were a huge theme in the last chapter. Big trees like that. Oh, here we go. I was expecting a hanging body. Who is it? Is it him? Anthony, answer me. Huh. I think we're going cuckoo. That's alright. It's going forward. Where does the path of madness lead us? Cryptic stone. What is she doing? Get close to her, get close to Anna! Okay. I mean, I guess I saw this one coming, but if I dare say, I was kind of hoping that I could hold the baby. Give it a good old cradle shake. And keep on shaking. Fuck it, baby, stop shaking. Down the road trail. When I count to three, you wake up. One. Two. Three! Now wake up, wake up! Now let's see, this is Doctor. You can rest now, Mr. Devitt. That will be enough for today. Are these sessions really necessary? I am confident that this is the best course of treatment for your symptoms. Now, did you ever see him again? 
I saw it. What did you see? Can you describe it? I struggled to find adequate words. It looked like an eye. Alright, you guys think I struggled to find adequate words? You guys think it looked like an eye? Hmm. I guess an eye. It was like an eye, perfectly rounded and dark, deep and empty, accompanied by the most horrifying, pain-filled screams I've ever heard. Inside a complete darkness where an evil dwells deep below, a forgotten fear for human reasoning but undoubtedly still ruts down deep inside our being. In my case, that fear is already awoken. I can understand why you are disturbed, Mr. Devitt. With your permission, I would like to consult on you on your case with a colleague of mine, a man I've known for many years who is more versed in modern psychology practices. I think this knowledge and experience would be very helpful in enabling you to understand your condition. I mean us, not you. I kind of have to understand too. I want to fucking know. I want to write a book about this one day. It's going to be called The Door Last. If you think it would help, Doctor, I leave it in your hands. The agony grows increasingly unbearable, and if you believe this man can help you, then I welcome his aid. Thank you, Doctor Wakefield. I bid you good evening. Anthony, my friend, what really happened to you? How could you have let your wife Anna die so awfully? These doubts consume my soul. I hardly remember the time we spent together as schoolmates. I confess that beyond your enduring friendship, I can recall little of those years. Were your words a result of an increasingly loss of insanity? In your letter, you wrote that someone awaits me. A warning to ward me from a genuine danger or merely the ravings of a brilliant mind idled by insanity. Something stirs uneasily within my heart. I will not rest easily again until I go back to the boarding school and find out what secrets may lie within. Oh. Farewell, Mr. and Mrs. Beechworth. Rest now in peace. Chapter 2, Memories An old, quite damaged mailbox. Where are you going? What's inside the mailbox, though? There's a postcard inside the mailbox. Dear sir, I better take it. Dear Matthew, it's been several months and I still have heard no news from you. My brothers insist that you have abandoned me, but I am sure you remain true. I know that you would never do that for me, for I know your heart and the honesty of your eyes. I got this address from a hospital in London and pray that it reaches you safely. If that's the case, I want you to know that I will be always waiting for you. Forever yours, Juliet Holloway. There is nothing else inside the mailbox. I guess he never received it. What a jerk! All right, now we have vines, we have a school, a boarding school that we need to investigate. Let's see. Hmm. Dare say we have two different trees here that seem to arc themselves to a fountain. And this is looking Resident Evil-like. The Angel Gabriel, or Gabriel, the school's emblem. I remember it being very pristine, but it looks neglected and dirty now. Who's a dirty angel? You're such a dirty angel. Alright, uh... Still dirty. What's down here? A stone eagle lies on the floor. It appears to have broken off of the fountain. I'll take a ween. I don't know why I need it, but maybe it's Resident Evil puzzle time. Now, before I enter into the house, let me check the back side of the door. Oh, there's an entrance... Wait, is someone, is someone here? A locked wood coffin hadly finished. 
It seems that whoever made it was in a bit rushed to finish. Oh, that's a coffin. I thought it was part of the tree for a second, but now I see it. Why, hello, Grave Digger. Good evening. I hope you're right, and this indeed be a good evening. My name is Devitt. I didn't know there was a cemetery here. My pleasure, Mr. David. I'm Fred Godwin. Don't ask me why, but Mercian got specifically ordered to bury the corpses here. Why? I don't understand. I should let you go back to your work. I don't understand. Did he order to bury corpses here? Why? I don't understand. What is there to understand? Mr. Devitt, God has forsaken this place. Ah, ah, don't you know? Here we take care of patients. I'm an old alumnus. I used to attend the school. I should let you go. I'm an old alumnus, of course. An old alumnus. I used to attend the school. It has been a long time since this is not a boarding school anymore. The building is now used as a nursery home run by nuns. A former student. Eh? I never heard anybody in the village speak fondly of the school. They say it closed overnight, though nobody knows why. Not a lot was known about it. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Godwin. I'll leave you with your work. Have a nice evening, alumnus, David. A grave recently dug. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Godwin. I'll leave you to your work. Why the fuck did you talk to me then? He gets back to work. I guess we can walk by him a little bit more. The small group of graves has been haphazardly arranged. Well, that's a disrespect to the day if I've ever seen one. All right, there's something over here. I can actually go this way? Ah, there's a beach. What's this by the beach? A piece of old fishing net. Can I take it? Yes, I can. I feel like I'm collecting stuff for some big puzzle. Piece of drift, what? Many years of drift have perfectly smoothed this float sound into a lot small log. Take that. Can't say anything outside of the beach, but you know, it looks nice. Let's see. On the way back as we stroll now. Ah, da, 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 da. Upwards as we go, now's hear me out. The small group of, yeah, I, I read that. Alright, so in the meantime, we're going to have to walk back towards we came. Curses, graves, sounds like a fun scenario. Let's get ourselves all set up then. Lock coffin, can I enter into the back, or is that an impossibility? The door is locked from the inside. Who would have figured? Well, with all else said and done, I guess we're going to head into the house now. What secrets lay within? A nun. This place is actually occupied like the last one. This painting holds a visage of a judgment, but yet compassion. Cool. Let's talk to you. Uh, pardon. Excuse me, sister. Why is your text box red? I don't trust this one bit. Good evening, sister. Good evening. I'm Mother Elizabeth. What brings you here, Mr... Uh, Devitt. I'm a former student of this boarding school. As you can see, Mr. Devitt, this stopped being an academic intuition a long time ago, and is now exclusively dedicated to prayer and the well-being of the patients under our care. I see. Even so, may I please speak to... Mr. Devitt, I'm afraid that we are too busy to start wasting time talking about past issues. In addition, three is little to, so there is little to say. We sisters arrived after the boarding school had closed down. Everybody but Monsignor, of course. Monsignor? Exactly. But you didn't answer them my question. Why have you come to this place, Mr. Devitt? It'd be good for me to appreciate the passage of time. This place will help me remember. I prefer not to talk about it. Well, this one's a pickle. Choices. The last chapter didn't have choices. So part of me is curious what I should say. So you put it all together. Hmm. I think I will say this place to help me remember, but... 
Uh, people, I've gotten responses for all of them so far. I guess we're going with two. This place will help me remember my past. If you have memory problems, I would recommend you to visit a doctor immediately and don't waste your time here. It'd be good for me to pay for... Oh, here we go. It'd be good for me to appreciate the passage of time. I guess that would be good a good idea to visit this place again and perceive the passage of time. Perceive the passage of time? What are you talking about? To be honest, I prefer not to talk about it. I couldn't tell you why this place is so important for me, but it is. A lot. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Mr. Devitt. I will allow you to stay around here. I hope I won't regret my decision. Don't worry, Mother. Thank you. And thus my code is put forth. Do you take care of any patients here? Did you say you cared for patients? Of course, Mr. Devitt. We tend to both uh, we tend to both the physical and spiritual needs of those in our care. Did Monsignor already live here? Did you say that Monsignor already lived here when this venue still was a boarding school? Indeed. He still was priest and professor before he became Monsignor and started to lead this place. Uh, Mr. Baldwin. There have been many deaths lately. Mother Elizabeth, Mr. Baldwin told me that lately a lot of patients are dying. What is happening? Sadly, the Lord has taken many of these unfortunate souls. Okay. Mr. Baldwin. Who is Mr. Baldwin? Minsingo instructed me to take him on as a caretaker. Many of the sisters find him a bit strange, but he performs his work well and complains little. Talk to Monsignor. Could I talk to Monsignor? I'm afraid that's impossible. Monsignor has left strict instructions that he not be disturbed, not even by any of the sisters. Thanks, Mother. I'll leave you with your duties. Alright, so we've learned all we can learn from there, I'm pretty sure. So there's a few different places we can go. As in, like, let me, I guess I'm going to start over here and work my way through. Three different directions. Mr. Devitt, these rooms are private. That means this way I go before I go upstairs. I want to explore this floor before I go on to the next. <coughs> Some bandages and other medical equipment. Nothing of interest. I see. Among the baggages, I can see a packet of letters bound by twine. I I'd ask you not to touch my belongings, please. You're not aware who you are talking to. I I'm sorry. A picture of St. Gamalus de Lely, patron saint of sick, hospitals, and nurses. He seems to have forsaken this place. Doc doctor I'm sorry. I'm not a doctor. Pay him pay him no mind. He has been delirious for some days. I miss Mary Venge, and this is my brother Matthew. <laughs> Juliet <coughs> Why have you left me? Why you don't answer my letters? <coughs> letters you see, the poor man is still obsessed with his wife. He won't accept that she left him months ago. My poor Matthew. I'm very sorry, Miss Finch. I hope he recovers. Thank you. Time goes very sl No, like this. Time goes very slowly in this place, as if it stopped. Please let us rest. Alright, can I take the notes? Uh, where are you? Weird. A bunch of medical reports. Well, we're getting strange in the medicalness of all this. Um, someone's asking, where are you? A magazine titled Weird Tales. When he says, where are you, I'm going to respond to him this time. Juliet. Uh, that's all you have to say, I got it. A magazine titled Weird Tales. What happened to you? Are you alright? There... There was a rhythmic sound. Like a breathing. 
But when? Last night, I felt an increasing pressure on my temples. Something dry and rough, like tree bark brushed against my leg. But I saw something on the wall, like a growing shadow. I lit the lamp, and there was nothing. Odd. Madam? I know it's a madam, but however, you now you sound like a deep, raspy voiced man. The poor woman has fallen into an uneasy, pitiful oral sleep. Alright, cool, cool. Just gonna check out the rest of the patients. Hey everyone, what's the cracks with the snaps? Now let's see, I think this is a girl too, so. Please, someone, Heidi. Now let's see this, ma'am. I'm gonna make all the nuns sound the same, I apologize. I'm sorry, you can't be here. Is there some way I can help? Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He will provide you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray there, next to the statue of Our Lady. D don't you think she is beautiful? Beautiful. The Virgin listens to those in need. Please, someone, Heidi. I already told you, you can't be here. But... Don't worry about it, sir. Oh, I read this. There are several crucifix all together at the headboard of this bed. Why? A gloomy statue of the Virgin Mary makes this place even more mournful if that is possible. A picture of the Virgin Mary gazing at you supposedly to portray a sympathy and compassion for you. However, they seem to look more pained and sorrowful here. Alright, we got something to enter here, I guess. I unlocked the door. Is this the back area? I think this is the back area where... Yep, I was right. Through here next, I guess. See, she was yelling, please help. I just saw... Uh, Huh? Huh? What the? What the fucking hell it just happened? Uh. All right. Uh. Let me go this way. Was that like intentional? Heidi. Heidi. I. Please help. Let me try this again. Okay, whatever. Next. I remember that we used to keep here some textbooks. Now there is a music box. We used to keep our textbooks in these shelves. The music box has done nothing. What's this note? Dear brother, I have received your letter and will try to write you more frequently. I hope you are studying a lot and you feel comfortable there. We miss you a lot. When are you coming back? Father is in bed with fever and I do not feel very well, but I am on medication. Today is my birthday and I am feeling blue. It's a quiet, boring Sunday at the village. Mom is going to cook a lemon cake as those than when grandmother used to make. I wish we could eat it together. Right back soon. I'm looking forward to knowing how you're doing. What you're learning, how is Scotland, and so on. A big hug, I think about you a lot. Your dear sister. How sweet. Now if we go this way... Hmm... Oh, I picked up the music box, I see. January 15th, 1876. Father Ernest seemed unusually troubled today. Several times he paused abruptly in the middle of a lecture for no reason, even during his favorite class, Theology. January 18th, 1876. Today Father Ernest was very irritable. Gollins made a comment and was expelled from class for and even Devet was a modest just for reading a philosophy book. I hope Father Ernest doesn't turn his ire towards me. My father will be disappointed if I fail to get good marks. January 21st, 1876. It was very disappointing to see Father Ernest entering class so pale and sweaty. In the middle of his lecture, he stumbled dazed and had to sit. January 22nd, 1876. Father Eugene taught our theology class today, even though he doesn't know the subject matter as well as Father Ernest. 
When we asked him what had happened to Father Ernest, Father Eugene told us that had taken that he had taken us ill. Us that had taken ill. Okay. What worries me is that now Father Eugene is also starting to look unwell. February 20th, 1876. It's been a month since we've seen Father Ernest. We're told that he's still sick, but if he's so ill, then why hasn't a physician come to treat him? My studies are flagging, but I have taken it upon myself to read on my own. I hope this helps, as I must succeed in spite of the problems happening around us. February 23rd, 1876. It was announced this morning that the school is to close. None of us know why, and we can't get a straight answer from the from the facility. From the facility, I can't say I cannot say that word. I'm sorry. They each dodge the question. I am starting to think they may not know the answer themselves. Their anxiety is palpable, or palpable, though they try to hide it behind a calm face. But what about Father Ernest? I hear he's alone. He alone is to remain after we've saved the premises. There's a picture in the diary. It's the photograph of my graduating class. I see myself, Father Ernest, and Anthony. I don't remember the names of the others. Our one face has been completely scratched out. Postcard. To ourselves. No. No, no, no not like that. Guess gonna look over here. There is an odd sentence written on the board. In death there is hope. In death there is life. One must seek its true nature to understand the nothing. It looks like it has been there for years, as the chalk has faded in some places. That is indeed odd. The books on the shelves are old and musty. Theology is the, the dominant subject. Doesn't appear anything else here. Guess I'm heading backwards. The clues and the pieces. How do they fit together? Now time to check out the second floor at least. And I was strolling in, I don't care. And I was strolling in, I don't care. Skipping through patience, cause I don't care. I'm still asleep, and I don't care. Alright, so we have now the upstairs to check out. I have a cough coming on. <coughs> Maybe inspired by them all coughing. Upstairs time. Okay. Hmm. A dusty old travesty of Virgin Mary were with baby Jesus in her arms. Cool. Why, hello, baby Jesus. Would you like would you like a nice little pet on the painting? Ah, oh, yes. Yes, baby Jesus would. There's something under this door frame. Which means I must investigate after a look at this. A worn out and faded travesty of Jesus Christ. Cool. Why, hello, elderly nun. What's this? A syringe next to a flask with a label that says morphine. Okay. One of the humble beds with a nun sleep. On the upper shelf, the antique book cupboard, a well-worn Bible and rosary beads gather dust. All right, that's a bed. Guess all else there's to observe is the nun herself. Good evening, sister. Sister. Ah, this suffering, all these tears, all our prayers unanswered. What? What do you mean, sister? All these years entrusted to the Lord, praying, looking for a sign, for something that can give me strength. Every day I hear them cry, pray, scream, and die. And what for? Where are you, Lord? Why don't you answer me? Lord works in mysterious ways. Maybe there is no Lord. What do you guys think I should say? Hmm. There is no Lord. It's I, I'd probably just say mysterious ways, but I my belief is that there is no Lord, but yeah. I, Ah, okay, let's go with number two. Maybe there is no Lord, sister. What should we do then? What is our living purpose? I can't go on, not like this. Excuse me, sir. Sister? Please, I just want to be alone. You're gonna sew and jack yourself with these needles. Take those with me. Take the syringe with me. Knock sister out the music box. <coughs> A bit of coffee is making me cough still. Sister. Please, I just want to be alone. 
I'm going to catch you in the net and take you home, and you're going to be my little sister. I mean, hey, with a stone. Look at this old photo. I'm not sure if this person is the recipient of this letter. Oh, I'm supposed to do that. Okay. Oh, I forgot I can investigate like this. Right. Anyways, back out. Time for her to kill herself. Sister, don't kill yourself with that syringe. Be more creative. <laughs> Let's see. Down the hallway we go. That's creepy. Another tapestry, though I remember from my school days the student dorm uh, dormitory was here. He's a log. The wooden stick is not sharp enough to cut the tapestry. Oh. I could damage the wooden stick. It wouldn't be useful to tie up the net to the stick. I don't think that breaking the music box serves any purpose. Ha 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 ha. I'm fun with this. You cannot tell. I can't see any use of trying the net to the stone. I can't see the sense of covering the music box with a net. The stone ornament is not sharp enough to help me cut this. Okay. That means next to this area. I'm guessing word. A bathroom. Just a couple of old towels. The showers, old, rusty, and poorly maintained. There's something inside this one, though. There's a puddle in the shower hole with something shining in the grating. I can't see it properly. Catch it with a net. Catch it with a log. Catch it with a stone. Catch it with a music box. Catch it with a postcard. No. None of my ideas work. The old rusty pipe communicates with the other areas of the house. Hmm. Log on the pipe. Do I be a jerk and I hit the pipe with a stone? Nope. Alright, that where'd I go? I guess I need to find the person who this uh, letter I have or picture belongs to. I guess I can go with all the previous sisters and um, figure it out. That sounds like it's the first step to my mystery. All right, postcard, let's try you. I'm not sure this person is receptive. Okay, whatever. That way, you. She's not the postcard receptant. It's addressed to someone called Matthew Vinge. It's you, isn't it? Mr. Vinge, I think this letter is addressed to you. Ah, thank you. Leave it to me if you'd be so kind. As you can see, my brother is too weak to read it. Well, Matthew, let's see what's written to you. Oh, it's a letter from our mother. Dear Matthew, I hope you are recovering. I wish that your beloved sister and you come back home soon. Mother needs now more care and attention than ever. She'll be back. What? It's kind of waiting for her to say. You know how alone Mother feels since she left? Mother needs you more than that. She will be glad you came back. Miss Vinge is making up the Laris contents. Making up the Laris contents. Mrs. Vinge is making up the Laris contents. Maybe I can grab the stuff from her because she's distracted. Ha ha ha! You'll never see me again. I don't know what these Laris go to, though. Do I give them to her? All these unopened letters are addressed to Matthew. Why would his sister keep them? Now, let's see. <laughs> My letters. All the letters I wrote to dear Juliet. You never posted them, but... Why, Mary? Why would you do such a thing? <coughs> How could you be so cruel? I had to do it, Matthew. You refuse to see how inappropriate a match she is for you. Her only interest is in marrying someone of your status, of our family status. It was for your sake I did this. I did it to protect you from that woman's treachery. No. You only thought about yourself, of your vanity. I can't bear to look upon you anymore, Mary. 
leave me be. From this day forth, you are no sister of mine. You dare banish me? And let's see like this. You dare banish me? I who have stayed by your side all through your illness. Very well, Matthew. You will have your way. I will leave you, and then you will see how very alone you are. Farewell, brother. Well, what a bitch. Thanks, thanks be to the Lord that you have come to reveal my sister's cruelty, sir. Please take this coin as a token of my appreciation. It is my lucky coin, though I hope it serves you better than it has myself. Yeah. I... It does go inside the music box. I was actually right with that guess. It looked like it fit inside the music box, so. Maybe you? Maybe I need to play it nearby something? So it's what I thought, it's for the older lady. That was for something else completely different, I just don't understand. Here we go. Oh, what a beautiful melody. It reminds me of my youth when I was vibrant and full of purpose. I knew my path then. Oh, may God bless you, for you have given me the sign I was looking for. A syringe next to flask label says morphine. Nothing there. Did I smash the morphine up? Guess not. Oh well, let's see what's going on outside. I mean, I doubt she's went inside the bathroom, but... Yeah, I still need something for that. Let's see... Oh. Okay. That's the second time that has happened. You aren't gonna let me, I know. I know the rooms are private. I'm just gonna go through here. See if I can find this nun. Maybe she's on the beach or something. You're still sleeping. That's cool. I'm not here with the other sister. Are you inside here? No. So I guess maybe she's actually outside this whole entire place. If she is outside, then I'm guessing she's by the beach. She could be up in front of the central yard, but let me just make sure of this. Traveling to the beach. Beach a beach a beach. What's this? Nun's habit and walking stick. There's no doubt it belonged to the nun I spoke to by the window. But where did she go? The Lost Pilgrim, a sea stack old a sea stack where students at the school used to climb. Somewhere up there are my initials. Nun! I don't got nothing of what I'm supposed to do here. Maybe anyway, I talk to him. He might know. Who is Monsinga? Who is Monsinga, Mr. Baldwin? Hmm. Let's see. I can't rightly say. After all these years, I've never seen the man. Who knows? Maybe he doesn't exist. <laughs> but Mother Elizabeth told me that Monsinga specifically requested my hiring by letter. I'm flattered my reputation precedes me, but I still can't tell you anything more about the man. Alright, whatever. Let me talk to everyone before I go out to the beach again. Let's make sure there's nothing new that anyone has to say. This still sticks out to me. Oh, through the window? Oh. Hello? A lot of dried leaves have accumulated in a hole in this rusty pipe. They are blocking the water stream. Alright, I look over here. From this vantage, I can see the roofs of apertures beyond the co or the, co the copes of trees. So I that the log. I think the wood would be, that would be useless. How about this? I think that would be useless. How about the net? I can't place the name there, it's full of dried leaves. 
coin. Oh, I just removed my hand, got it. The hole is very sharp and rusty edges. If I try to put my hand in, I can cut myself. I cut myself with the edge of the pipe. I blunted the sharp edges of the pipe, now I need not fear being cut. There is nothing now to impede the water stream. Cool. Listen to that music box, funky music. Okay, so there we go, that's apparently what I had to do. Something about the water streams, I don't flippin' know. Let me first check the bathroom before I get really deep into this. I don't understand, I don't got a feeling. Gotta find. Uh, maybe I have to put the net in after I sharpened it. Maybe it's like one of those things where I need to do several things before I judge. Maybe not put the net here. The net should catch anything that comes through down the pipe. If some object happens to pass through here, I think I would stay caught in the net. Alright, that means I know what I'm doing. It has finally all come together. Some, this is kind of overly complicated way to do this, but whatever, it works. I used to log on you, right? No? There's a puddle in the shower room with something uh, shining under the grain I can see properly. Why can't I log it? Why can't I log it? I already can open the tab with no risk of leaving the shiny object. There we go, I have to rush the water. There we go, overly complicated way to do this. Rush all the water, waste all their water bills. Ah, ha, ha, okay. Now with all that said and done, that means that the only option is that we can collect the coin from the shiny net. It's like fishing for cheaters. All right, how about you? The net's caught the shiny object. Teardrop. That's kind of weird. I mean, I'm not going to question what I need teardrops for, except can I use it to, like, a knife? Wait. Is that my feet? Yep, I was right. The tear doesn't work to cut the tapestry. Oh, that's not what it's for? Alright, I guess Puzzleville is still here. Time to go downstairs and see who likes this tear. I don't think it's me that likes it, so... Let's put this here. Nothing there. Over here? Do you want a tear? No. Anyone want to cry? I got a teardrop just for you. It's probably this last lady over here. This wouldn't be my guess. No? None of you guys like crying? How about on the statue? Knew it. I have placed the glass tear in a hollow of the virgin's cheek. It seems that it fits perfectly. In the eyes of a fervent devotee, it would look like a real tear. Please, someone, piety. Oh, I already told you you can't be here, but... But... Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He will provide you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray there next to the statue of Our Lady. The Virgin listens to those in need. I'm gonna hit anything with my log. My log, my log. My log is willing to hit anyone for my job. My log, my log. I'm gonna da 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 da. An old mirror that hardly reflects. A syringe next to a flask label that says morphine. That's cool. You're an old mirror that hardly reflects. Hit you. Can't hit you. I'm gonna walk around. Da da. Da da. Do 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 do. Da da. Da da. A broken mirror. There's a protruding piece. Alright. Oh. Got it. 
We found this. The mirror is too thick to paint in the wood, but it also seems fragile. I could break it if I forced it. Alright, can you break this open? The mirror chunk is sharp, but too weak to cut off the tapestry. It might break. The mirror is too thick to pin in the wood, but also seems fragile. I could break it if I force it. Hmm. Hmm. Pieces, pieces. Now, who wants a mirror? Will you look at me and see the monster you've become? Sorry, I've broken the area after I could do this. I hope it brings me better luck than to Mr. Rivera, Mr. Vintage. Use a box probably belonged to one of the students. Many years of drift, perfectly. Yep, yep, got it. Uh, you like mirrors? Cause I don't. But seriously, is there no one in this facility who would like a mirror? Look at yourself. No. You? No. You? 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 Oh, here we go. This might be it. Oh, the our mother is crying. Oh my lord, what does it mean? What have I done? What have we done? I said praise the lord! He cries in the eye. Here we go, now I can talk to you. How are you doing? You must help me. <laughs> what can I do? What's wrong with you? There is a little time. I tell them about my pain. I describe the unbearable and endless pain. Yet they do not listen. They pass me by without even looking at me. They say that they are praying for me, but it does not cure my element. But, sir, I... I know, but I beseech you. You will be saving me from horrible torture. I will be eternally indebted to you. I don't know if you have the courage to do that. I don't know if I would have the courage to do that. I guess I could find the courage to help you. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? It's a guy. There's okay. There's a girl in here that sounds like a guy. There's a guy in here that sounds like a girl. Everyone's happy. Okay, we got number two, number so one. I understand. The request is terribly hard for me. I guess I could find the courage to help you. I understand the magnitude of what I'm asking. God bless you, sir. I don't know how I can show my gratitude. What I need you to do is, without the nuns noticing, to try to get an amount of morphine enough so... so that I can be embraced by the deepest of dreams and in that way stop the rhythm of my heart. I wonder how to go about and do that. I hope you find everything I need. You might have my sincerest gratitude. Alright, so we know where the morphine is, thankfully. So this isn't a big old click and search hunt for us this time. We're forgetting to click something or something. We're gonna go up here. We're gonna go to the morphine. Oh god, none here. She's praying feverently. Hail Mary, full of grace. Lord with thee. Let's run back to a flask, a label that says morphine. My womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death. Alright, got it. Now to inject this nurse full of morphine. Okay. You want morphine? You all want the magic medicine of morphine. No, seriously, don't inject yourself morphine. I'll kill you. That's hard to use it for suicide right now. Or homicide. Huh? There's no on the bed. Baldwin lies, Baldwin lies, Baldwin lies, Baldwin lies, Baldwin lies, Baldwin lies. 
Hmm. Well, that's odd. Baldwin's right outside the door. I'm first checking over here to make sure. Well, let's go this way. And this way. Noises come from inside the coffin. What the hell? A grave recently dug. The lock is used soft, to even, soft even used as a lever and open the coffin. A locked badly fish in a wooden cough. It seems that whoever made it was a bit rushed to finish it. Inject with morphine! Okay. We need to think of some way to open that up. Is there anything around here that there wasn't previously around the grave? Doesn't seem like it. I'm gonna go out to the beach and see what happens first. So, yeah. A nun's habit and walking stick. I have a feeling there's something darker going on here now. They aren't burying the dead, they're burying the living. Sinners be sinners, you see. We must bury all the sinners. Yeah, Jesus. Let's go this way. Why, well, hello, Baldwin. Let me take your tools. Looks like his toolbox. I wonder if there's something anything useful in it. I might be able to take a look if I keep them distracted. Please don't touch my things. Please don't touch my things. Tell me about this place. Tell me about this place. Well, the construction of this building was ordered by an ex Pulaski bishop in the Aberdeen in 1905. Tell me about Mother Elizabeth. Tell me about Mother Elizabeth. She's pretty strict, I can tell you that much. Mr. David don't think she's very much likes me either. Tell, uh, tell me about Aberdeen. It was the place where I was born and raised. And I went and spent the rest of my days. I got into one little fight, and now I'm here. I was born and raised one of the biggest cities in Scotland. If you look there towards northeast, you'll find King Chapel's Tower in the highest point of the city. Oi, you seem a bit distracted, Mr. David. Oh, don't worry about it. Tell me about missing gear. Tell me about missing gear. I can't really say. After all these years, I have never seen a man who knows maybe he doesn't exist. But Mr. Elizabeth told me that Munson Gear specifically requested her to hire you by letter. I'm flattered my reputation precedes you. That didn't happen. I'll leave you to work. Hey, by the way, is this yours? Sam, over the head with it. Alright, we got what we needed to pry this open. Let's take care of it. darkness of his eyes. His body is petrified. He has sheer terror look in his eyes. Oh my god, but what has happened? Talk, talk to me. Mother Elizabeth is trying to make him come to his senses. Inject her. Inject him. Hit her with a log. Okay. Oh wait, if she's distracted, and this guy's gone, that means I can go here. Right. There are the papers as well as was working. A large bright ornate key. The door is locked. Obvious. The last door. Okay. Because dwell in his eyes the deepest darkness. Okay. 
through here. I dare say I want to meet this fellow. You all make him sound so obviously charming. Come in. Let's see if you like this. Come in, my son. Did you think you could hide those books from me? Uh, they are just classic literature books, Father Scotus and Aristotle. Silence! Instruments of falsehood, you mean. Fallacious coming from the stake. Now, son, get on your knees and raise your arms. Apologize to the Lord! Pray to the Lord! It's Latin. Malum and si, evil is itself. A strange eye-shaped shimble. I hit it with a stick! Oh, that's not coming to play yet. Eventually that stick will be useful. Did a, did a bird just run into the bird? Oh, yep, I guess we got crows. Crows, I haven't seen you guys in a while. If you want to run to windows, you're free to, I guess. A strange eye-shaped symbol. Why are birds running themselves in the windows? You'd think that they'd realize that there was a front door that's actually open. Eye of the bird. What does it mean? Birdies, you really should stop doing that. It's terrible for the skin. Alright. Let's see. A set of crucifix next to the door. Here, I guess. Oh, let's go for the game. Lord, your eyes burn me. I don't deserve mercy nor forgiveness. Oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Who are you sending me? Is death to whom all you are handing me over? Has my hourglass already run out of sand? Of all the earnest. Earnest? Since I last heard that name, since. Oh, I see. Father, I'm here to be able to remember you. Remember, you have to help me. I beg you. Please. Entities. Petulance. Praying. Torment. Exemption. Past times bring us just misfortune and pain. Father Ernest, I was one of your students. One of my students, you say. It's only the Lord, the one who teaches us. We all must follow his ordinance and disciplines. Get closer, son. Come to pray next to me. A creepy image of Christ crucifixed inexplicably has a dark cloth covering his head. The makeshift altar is coated in a dense layer of wax. The candles haven't almost burnt out to have barely illuminate the room. He has a large burn covering his eyes. He is completely blind. Despite his de uh, decrepitude, his extreme thinness and paleness, I can still recognize Father Ernest. But he seems far away, like in another world. The walls are completely covered with crosses, a mentally ill act. That note has my attention. Ah, oh, I thought that would do something. Try like this. Can I burn this? Can I hit Jesus? <laughs> Can I hit him? Should I inject him with morphine? Or no, I guess I have to talk to him. Alright, alright. Glory to be, glory be to the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Now, my son, tell the Lord which one is his voice, the sharp sword, the wise quail, or the delicate pedal. The sharp sword, the wise quail, the delicate pedal. Ah, uh, hmm. He probably thinks the Lord is a sword. He was crucified, so maybe he's a delicate petal. 
Or he could be a wise quill. I think he might think it's a dark sh uh, sharp sh uh, sharp sword, though. That sounds right to me what he probably thinks. The sharp sword. Yes, yes, that's it, my son. The Lord with his sharp sword transmit us his wisdom, his power, and his punishment. And now, my son, tell the Lord which one is his holy path. The wise virtue, the endless blame, or the blessed penance. The wise virtue. The wise virtue. No, no, no! Your soul lives embraced by darkness! And now, my son, tell the Lord, who are you? The faceless pilgrim, the gate god, or the lost seaman? The lost seaman, the gate guard, the faceless pilgrim. Something fell over. Uh. I am the lost seaman. The lost seaman? Yes, yes. That's it, my son. We live lost in an endless ocean of sin and blame. Now leave me alone. I have to purify my soul. I know you are there. You can hear me? Get out of my room. Despite being blind, his presence good hearing. I must be more careful in moving. Four witnesses. The eye calls me. Will only move when he's moving, I get it, because he's blind. <coughs> Dear God in heaven, I feel for you. Your light is in my eyes. I will burn them for you. Dear God in heaven, I feel myself in you. Your eyes are in my soul. I will burn it for you. Dear God in heaven, I feel myself in you. Your sword is in my hand. I will burn them for you. Dear God in heaven, I hate myself in you. My blame is in your heart. I will burn myself for you. Oh, there's actually something there. The old razor blade stained with blood. <laughs> do I do it like this? No? I'm not supposed to kill him. Can you hear this, bitch? No. So I drew the log. Uh, I'm out. Eye of the bird. That window never had anything happen to it. Expecting. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. William Neelands, November 13th, 1981. Cause of death. Uh, cantaloupes, I mean colexia? Notes, scratch marks have been found in his stomach. Elmer Moore, November 17th, 1891. Cause of death? Plerichia. Notes, a clear expression of terror on the patient's paralyzed face was found at the time of death. Evelyn Enzi, November 20th, 1980 or 1891. Cause of death? Marismo. Notes, we have found the patient dead and medicated in paleness in the body. Theodore Hayden, November 23rd, 1891. Cause of death, typhoid fever. Notes, the patient suffered severe hallucinations minutes before death. Screamed and shook until the operate, or the operate started to take effect. Shook until as a typo. Lena Ashdown, November 27th, 1891. Cause of death, uh, directly to Notes, during the autopsy, we found some strange black marks on his fingers. Uh, Claude Harris, December 10th, 1891. Cause of death, unknown. Notes, he died while he was sleeping. 
Nora Dunstan, December 13th, 1891. Cause of death, resp respiratory arrest. Notes blank. Ellen Blair, December 14th, 1891. Cause of death, morphine overdose. Patient committed suicide. Note, the patient did not seem to have depressive symptoms or suicidal tendencies. Uh, Oliver Foster, December 18th, 18, 1891. Cause of death, poisoning. Notes, the patient was admitted with serious symptoms of poisoning. Well, this is all very conspicuous. Sister? You okay in there? She's praying feverently. Inject her with morphine! Alright. Oh, the razor blade could cut this open, right. I wouldn't be able to cut this uh, thick taspity using just the knife. My hands wouldn't have enough strength. Using the wooden stump as a handle, I can use this to cut. And there we go. All right, let's go through here. And something more. And finally, our expert in philosophy, Jeremiah DeVette, shows up. Where were you, my friend? We've been looking for you. Well, as I was saying, tonight is the perfect moment for our next meeting. But I suspect that someone outside our group is secretly surveilling us. Who is it, Anthony? My dear friends, it's Professor Glynn. Do you mean Father Ernest? Certainly, no doubt about it. Therefore, dear colleagues, I have decided to change the venue for tonight's meeting. Have you noticed the lounge behind the small door of the dining room? I have believed convenient to borrow the key for our necessities. You already know at 12 o'clock you find that door open and I'll be inside the lounge. That's it, my dearest colleagues. Videt Nequesquiat. Videt Nequesquiat. Now then, if we work over this way... I remember that in this furniture we used to keep some of our personal belongings. Now it is empty. Working over this way... The walls are in complete disarray. I could probably punch through it if I tried. Punch it! Hey, with morphine. Okay. Alright, this bed has something. I remember this is the bed where I used to sleep when I was a student here. No, 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 I wasn't done. <laughs> Mr. Rabbit was jumping through the forest in a warm spring afternoon. Can I take the light? Guess not. When going through a bush, Mr. Rabbit ran to the Mr. Wolf. Mr. Vulture and Mrs. Snake were also having a heated argument. Through the red. Mr. Rabbit, curious, asked them, Dearest, why are you arguing in this beautiful and cheerful spring afternoon? The road ends over there, so it has to be this way. Down Dreams to Wary. Mr. Wolf answered politely, What we are trying to decide here is who else will have the pleasure to eat you up. Mr. Rabbit, really scared, said, But I don't want to be eaten. I want to live. Let me eat all of you instead. <laughs> oh my. Well, this is, this is getting interesting. To which Mrs. Snake answered, smiling, That's impossible to happen, Mrs. Rabbit, since we all, both you and us, are going to die, sooner or later. Uh, don't you think so? There's something or someone there. Uh, Mr. Vulture added, 
Mrs. Snake is right. We should stick to the issue at hand. It's getting late, and as you see, we do not agree. Do you want to help us to decide, Mr. Rabbit? Who would you suggest as the one to eat you? After thinking about it for a while, Mr. Rabbit came up with an idea and carefully said, I got it. Why not to organize a race? The first who arrives to the forest clearing will have the privilege to eat me. No doubt Mr. Wolf can run at high speed, but Mr. Vulture can go flying and avoid any obstacle, and I'm sure that Mrs. Snake knows all the shortcuts within the forest. I guess the competition is balanced. What do you think? There's people standing in the windows. The three predators agreed that it was fair, so they started the race and they quickly disappeared. Mr. Rabbit, happy to trick them, started running at high speed in the opposite direction of the predators who, eager to prove their worth, didn't realize the trick. Mr. Rabbit was far away from there, and he finally felt safe, happy, and proud of his cunning. But suddenly, there was a loud bang. The earth shook, frightened, birds flew, and everything went dark. The end. Bunnies? I mean, you all want to part of the story? I could tell you all about it. I got... I, I, I can explain this. I can explain this, bunnies. We, no, seriously, seriously, it's all a big misunderstanding. I'm, I'm going this way. See you later, bunnies. I am out. I'm out. I'm out. Okay, I'm back. Bunnies, just ignore me. I am but a man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here. An impressive love! There is something I kept for myself for a long time. And the thing is that I love you. I have always loved you. But that's the first time I saw you since the first time I felt your frozen hands. Each time I move away from you, I miss your glassy, empty, dead eyes. I miss your rough hair, your grayish skin, your stench. But our love just can't be. It's an impossible love. The end. I have the batshit weirdest dreams. No, not again. How long have I been sleeping? What was, all, what was all that about? In the nightmare, I found a place. A place in my memories. Odd. A dusty mirror. Doesn't seem to be much else here. The walls are complete disarray. Could probably patch if I could. All right, let's leave on out. Let's see where we're headed. Music's getting all epic. I remember that this furniture we used to keep some of our personal belongings. Now it's empty. On out we go, I guess. First of all, the bathroom has nothing. Got it. I need to check all the rooms before we make it too serious and deep into this. So we're going. Now then, talk to you, maybe? She's praying feverishly. And we take here. Apparently that was just a glitch. That just got more morphine for some reason. I'm gonna go outside first and uh, check the front gate. Nothing here. And... This way. Mother Elizabeth is trying to make him come to his senses. Before I do all that, let me go down uh, to the ocean because I'm just kind of investigating before I do what I think I have to do. I have my theories of what I have to do. All right, still no answers where she went. I guess the only answer is return. Nothing there. Let's go to the front. And over here. Nothing in here, probably, but I'm gonna check still. 
In my disturbing nightmare, I was brought to this spot. And the very obvious thing under that very ridiculous carpet. In the trapdoor, I saw my nightmare. From here sprouts a horrible stench. There's something down there. Did you see it? Did you see it? It was here just in front of me. He was screaming. He shakes uncontrollably. His body racked with pain and there is only one way to end his suffering. But the decayed corpses of a young woman, it seems as if she had been devoured by an animal. The strench, uh, the, uh, the strenches used to carry the corpses here. Who is behind this? There's nothing more this way. He must have been dead at least a week, still bearing an expression of horror. I'm going this way. The walls are splattered with dried blood. Cool. Hmm, an open door. Ritual as always, Devitt. Now all that remains is to introduce our guest. You may come in now, Professor. Father Ernest! Do not worry, my friend. I invited him to join us this evening. The Professor genuinely shares our curiosity, and who better to complete our group than one of the most renowned theologists? Moreover, we mustn't ban those who are willing to explore beyond the veil. The moment we have to wait, it has now arrived. Please, all of you, take a seat, and we shall begin the procedure. Soon shall the door be open, and then may we finally see what lies beyond. Now I ask that you close your eyes. You will feel a momentary prick as I inject you with the serum. After all these years, I have not forgotten your voice. You are the fourth witness. I remember. I remember now what happened. What is it? What is it that we saw? The eye of the bird. Merluminse. What happened to us? What is it that we witnessed? You must tell me. You must make me understand what my mind cannot fathom. It was our curiosity that damned us. We open that which would not be opened. In doing so, we show on the veil that separated our world from his. In seeking vision, we were ourselves seen by the eye of the bird. The eye of the bird saw us. It remembers us. It looks for us. It calls us from its darkness, from its abominable lair. All these years, I have attempted to return to it, but I have no strength left. Those poor, wretched creatures are too fragile. They lack the sight to return. Not one of them has returned. Only us, the four witnesses. Who are the other two? Where are they? They disappeared as you did. I haven't heard from any of you, but I was seized by curiosity. It absconded with my faith and deprived me of my sanity. Oh Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Nothing remains. All that is left is surrender. Surrender to him! Gravely have us we sinned, and now the absolution is to burn! To burn in the flames! Malum. In. See.
The adventure continues in Chapter 3, Nun's Drawer's Description by Jared. And here we go, some credits. The more we know. Okay, that was fun. Did you guys like it? Alright, so we all learn a few new things and have some good old times. The next episode will be out whenever the next episode comes out. The chapter is released. Chapter 1 is currently available and Chapter 2 is playable if you pay as well as future episodes when they're first available. So there you go. So there we go this way. We're just seeing all these descriptions. Uh, actually, it's, it's, it's looping. So there we go. Uh, that was that. I can make a donation, but I already donated. Not to mention I have my own funding issues to worry about right now. But anyways, though, I'll catch you guys next time.